the beginning, but let's start uh, with the cross examination on behalf of uh, or in respect of accused number two, Mr. Dance. You, you testified before this court that at the time when he was arrested, which was the 16th of June 2020, if I'm not mistaken, there were many pending cases against him. Am I correct? No. Um, well, you're not correct when you say pending. My understanding of pending means the matter is enrolled. There were no matters that were enrolled and okay. pending against Mr. Dunn. There were cases that were identified and there was a person interest in those matters. So they were not pending. Okay, so what, what was the status of whatever that you have? Were they cases? What was it? So that I can be able to refer properly to those dockets. I need the status of those case dockets. My Lord, I've said, um, when, when accused one and two's name were brought to us as being involved in this matter, cold case analysis was done and the number of cases where there were persons of interest, in other words, suspects, other than this matter were then identified. So, but there was no pending matter, because my understanding of a pending matter is a matter that is before court. I'm answering in that context. But there were cases where he was a person of interest, um, particularly the one of Nongoma that Sergeant Mohani pursued him on, um, and, and others that came up, my dear. Umani Bopa Umanga Lolo Esbini Gwa Kate Una Manya Matala Anga Kate Gwa La Umanga Lolo Esbini Ubega Te Hamba Gwa Utu Upre Gajir Ka Amatala Awaiga te engaga fagwa en kanto. Uma uti amatala angaga tetwa minango bamin kabangutu ushu uti amatala ase afagwe en kanto. Otwa beguna manya matala esa penywa gungaga tetwa ugu penywa. Ai uguti angaga uwa noma angaga fagwa en kanto. Okay. As a court please, Monat, we don't want to interfere with my colleague's cross examination. But we just want to get clarity. At the inception of her cross-examination, she mentioned that she's conducting cross-examination on behalf of accused number two. Uh, counsel for accused number two has already conducted cross-examination. I suppose it might be just a slip of the tongue that it was meant to mean on behalf of accused number five. Because no two counsel can cross-examine a witness for the for the same accused. Yes, Ms. Ma'am Sholul. Yes, the court please is my lord. I submit my lord with the due respect that I am entitled to cross examine the witness on the evidence that he testified on. On behalf of? On behalf of accused number two as I'm cross examining on. Have you read the case of by Hattenbeck State versus <coughs> Who's this gentleman? The Dr. Death. What's his name, by the way? Basson. Basson. State versus Basson. Have you read that case? No, my lord. It's, it says exactly what uh, your learned colleague is telling you. That uh, in one case, you cannot have more than one cancer cross-examining on behalf of a, a person who is said to be accused so-and-so. Only one person can do it at a time in the same trial. My Lord, if the court is of the view that I should not do cross-examination to this witness, I won't have any questions. No, no, it's not the court. You know what? Just go, hello. Just go and that case of state versus son. <laughs> Basson. state versus Basson. It's by Hattenbeck. Let's just pause and read it because I'm now being accused that I am denying the opportunity to cross-examine. It's not me. No, it's not the accusation, my lord. I, I respect the, the, the court. Why don't you check it? You've got a computer there, Mr. Baloy. <coughs> my lord, we, we don't even need to go there. No, 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 no. We have to. Maybe. That's a very long judgment, my lord. Hello? It's a very long judgment. No, 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 no. We just, uh, the whole uh, we just extrapolate the ratio. Are you aware of it? Yes, I'm aware of it. Am I yes. correct in saying it, it says that? Yes, my Unless, my unless, unless there was, a, yes. there was a, an exception which was made by 
Judge Hatzendeck, because they were busy with a case which was in intricate and it was voluminous. Yes. And he said, on the basis of that, he will give an indulgence to render an exception. But generally, once a counsel is, being cons uh, <laughs> is cross examining a particular person, you see what Mr. Mcholo says? He says he's cross examining on behalf of accused number two. That's what you are saying, is that not so? Hello? My Lord, if the court says I should not cross examine, I, 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 I no, won't no. proceed. You keep saying the court says. I'm saying the law says. As the court business. So let's read the law. But, but you know what? If you phrase it some other way, it could perhaps be permissible. But if you're saying you're crossing on behalf of excuse number two, when Mr. Gomezulu already said that and he knows Mr. Gomezulu, I told him that he can't do it because Mr. Ramosipiri had already done so, you remember. But I said, because we are coming into, into the case for an exigency of fairness, I'm going to relax that rule. And I can even do it now. But People must understand that it is not I saying that. It's the law. That's the court business. Just read that. Mm. In the meantime, once mm. we... Okay, fine. Yeah, incidentally, Hudson Beck was a judge in this division. He re retired somewhere 2000, I think 2004, somewhere there. And he was actually the most senior judge at that stage by experience, although he was not the judge president and neither was he the deputy judge president, if I recall. Mr. Um, Malou, yes, we'll, we'll check that we can proceed on the basis that we don't get that decision. It's, it's, we, we do. It's, it's so what's your problem? It's, re, it's referred to in several... We, we do have the decision, Manu, but we're just looking for the paragraph. There are about four references to the case. And uh, we're still searching for that specific paragraph. Manu. But we just thought that to save time... No, no, no. You can't save time by not doing the right thing. Okay, so we'll look for... It. Mr. Minister, you, don't, you can't find that decision. On the head, on the head note. There are, uh, there are two judgments, like one from Judge Bergassin back here and the one from Constitutional Court. Yeah, yeah. No. Comes into, uh, it, do you have both of them? I'm um, the one that is from the Constitutional Court. Yeah, quote it, quote it. it. it confirms what uh, the judge said. Yeah. That's it. Mr. M Mr. Mshololo is not aware of those judgments.
Mr. Gomez, you didn't read the judgment after I quoted it for you. Dr. Hudson Beck. State versus Walter Basson. Walter Basson, yeah. But in fact, that judgment goes further than what I have just said, because I am saying the general principle is that two councils in the same matter cannot conduct a cross-examination of a state witness on behalf of a client. Here, the client is represented by Mr. Gomezu. But the ratio in that case, it says uh, two, two, two councils acting for one client can't do that. You, they've got to divide themselves. But here, as I say, there is a slight uh, nuance in the sense that uh, okay, I've got the judgment here. S versus Basson, 2001, 2, SACR 537 T. This matter was hit on the 30th of July, 2001, by Hudson Beck, R. The head note reads like this. Fly note, trial, dash witnesses, dash cross-examination, dash of accused by more than one state advocate, dash long and complicated case concerning two separate groups of charges, cross-examination by two state advocates, allowed on certain conditions. Head note, during the trial of a law and complicated case, the state applied before the accused was to testify for permission for the accused to be examined, cross-examined by two state advocates. The state, the state's legal team consisted of two groups, two of the advocates handling the charges of fraud against the accused and the other two advocates handling the other charges. Whilst one group was busy with its part of the evidence, the, of the evidence, the other state advocates were not present in court. The state contended that there were in effect two separate cases before the court and that the case was an extraordinary one in which a mass of evidence had been led. The court referred to the rule of practice which prohibits the cross-examination of a witness by more than one legal representative of a particular litigant. But held that there were some exceptions to the rule where the courts had held that they had a discretion to allow a deviation from the rule. The court was of the opinion that although the case had two legs, there was a measure of overlap a refusal of the application would prolong the case. The court accordingly upheld the application on the following conditions. One, that the leaders of the two groups of state advocates be permitted to pose any further questions after they had finished cross-examination and his colleague had begun his part of the cross-examination. 
The advocates had to determine who would first cross-examine over lapping evidence, and one advocate who first cross-examined on such an aspect completed his cross-examination on that aspect, and no further examination would be allowed by the other advocate of the aspect unless substantial reasons could be provided for deviating from the rule. Actually, the, the government of this rule of practice is to avoid a repetition of cross-examination. Like, for instance, the question Ms. Musololo has asked you, it was asked. It was asked and answered by me. I know, I know. Hmm. I can repeat it. <coughs> it was asked. Indeed. Now we are being asked that question for the second time, in other words. But you know what? I'll, I'll bend the rule. Do it again. You can cross-examine, but you must know that that law says that. So I'll take it for granted that maybe you have some information or facts which you predicate your cross-examination on. Because remember, at this stage, we are on a trial within a trial, the admissibility of a trial within a trial. And just for another legal precept, Just say one. There is a case of, and it's not me saying that, it's the law books. There's a case regarding admissibility. When issue of admissibility is to be determined, the duty of the presiding officer, the duty of the presiding officer is to keep inadmissible evidence out, not to listen passively as the record is turned into a papery sump of appropriate to some situation. A, a preparatory sum of evidence, sorry. Frequent practice of admitting evidence provisionally, though appropriate to some situation, often works, unfortunately. The case, you can take the, the citation. The case is State versus Rama Valley. Rama Valley, 1996, 1, SACR 639. AD. The judgment was written by Schulz. He was sitting with uh, her and others. Okay. I said you can continue if you want to. 